Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing five ways you can trick yourself into being productive. This can be helpful for when one half of your brain really aligns with your goals and the other half is just being unproductive and telling you not to do anything. These tricks can help you shut down that procrastinating unproductive half of your brain and instead listen to the part of yourself that is actually telling you to do the things that you need to do, whether that be studying or exercising or working on something on your to-do list. So let's get started with method number one. You can motivate yourself to get things done by looking back and reminding yourself of everything else you've accomplished so far. A while ago, I listened to this podcast and I remember this study about coffee shop reward cards. In one case, they gave their participants a coffee shop reward card where for every six drinks you buy, you get one free drink. So you start with one stamp and you need five more to get that free drink. In the other scenario, they gave the participants a card that required 11 drinks to get the free drink. But the first time you went out and got a drink with a new card, they'd give you six stamps in advance, which basically left you with two seemingly identical coffee shop cards in which you need to buy five more drinks to get another free one. But in the group that required 11 stamps, it seemed like you were already halfway there. Whereas in the group that required six stamps total, it felt like you had just barely gotten started. And in the group where they started already being halfway there, even though the literal quantity of five drinks was the same, that group was more likely to follow through and get five more drinks for the free drink. Basically, what this whole study illustrates is it's helpful to view your work as already being mostly done or at least partially done instead of just thinking of it as completely unfinished. And to do this, you can just look back at all of the progress you've made so far. For instance, maybe I have an assignment due for AP Stats. Technically, that assignment is 0% done. But if you look back instead at the entire progress bar of learning the subject of statistics, I'm already 90% there. It's really empowering to look at it in perspective and realize that you're basically almost done. You've made so much progress already, and therefore it shouldn't be too hard to just finish off the last remaining bit. Method number two is the kick in the butt. I couldn't come up with a less weird sounding name, but it will make sense as I explain, hopefully. Keep in mind though that this tip is kind of a two types of person thing, and if you don't think this would work for the way you tend to interpret the world, maybe don't do it because it might just discourage you. I tend to get lazy with studying or learning new things when I feel overconfident and complacent. Like I might avoid studying for a test because I think I already know the material super well, so what's the point in studying? And this clearly is not the best mindset to be in because Obviously, I do not know everything and I do need to study in order to actually succeed on the test. So when I'm starting to feel this particular type of laziness, I usually like to do a really, really difficult version of the task or problem in order to kick myself in the butt and make myself realize that in fact, I do not know everything and I do need to study and work hard. For me, getting that shock into my system makes me feel the, oh crap, I'm doing badly. I need to work harder in order to become actually good. Now this only works if you're in the complacency category of procrastinating and you know that you're the type of person who will rise to face a challenge instead of feeling defeated. By the way, don't feel like this is a judgment on your character if you don't think you're the type of person this would work well for. Because some people tend to respond positively to something difficult viewing it as a challenge, whereas some people are just more disposed to view it as a threat and feel like they would rather ease into a difficult topic by starting with something easy and building it up. Neither one is the correct method. It's just different types of people, so do what would work best for you. Method number three is the two minute rule. And for me to explain this one properly, let's go into some of the psychology behind why people procrastinate. The main reason is because your brain is anticipating pain to come from doing the particular task, whether that be running for 30 minutes or working on a difficult problem set. And because your brain thinks doing the thing will hurt, it's going to stop you from doing it because, you know, your brain just doesn't want to feel pain. It's just a normal human instinct. Nothing wrong with that. When this kind of resistance builds up, sure you could just use brute force self-control to make yourself do the thing, but it might be a little bit easier to just reduce the resistance level that your brain is automatically feeding you. 
To circumvent this, you can just reduce the anticipated pain level by telling yourself to do an easier or shorter version of the task. And that's where the two minute part of the two minute rule comes in. Basically, you can promise yourself, I'm only going to work on this for two minutes. I'm gonna go outside and jog for two minutes or work on my math problems for two minutes. Your brain doesn't have that much pain response because it's just two minutes, it's not that much. But once you've overcome that initial speed bump of your brain's natural resistance to getting started, you'll often end up in a flow state and realize a, it's not that painful, and two, you actually enjoy it and want to keep going. Now, of course, if you don't feel yourself going into that flow state, do take a break and then come back for another two minutes because you don't want your brain to start being like, you always tell me that I only have to do two minutes of work and then I can stop, but then you make me keep going. So I'm gonna start ignoring the two minute rule because no, 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 that is not a good idea either. But I don't anticipate you having that problem very often because at least in my experience and through the experiences of others I've talked to, the two minute rule is pretty useful in getting you into the flow of doing work. Take you back to my youth. Show you what I wish I knew. Method number four is outside accountability. And kind of like the kick in the butt method, it does only work for specific types of people. Although I think this would work for at least 50% of people. This will really work for you if you're the kind of person who responds well to outside accountability. That means pressure from others to show up for a meeting or go to practice or get an assignment done on its due date. I first learned about this from Gretchen Rubin's The Four Tendency, and there's a lot more resources about outside accountability on her blog and podcast as well, so I definitely recommend you check that out. I also found her resources really helpful in realizing that being responsive to outer accountability while not having as much responsiveness to inner accountability, which is trying to get yourself to do work, is not necessarily a moral failing or a weakness in self-control. If you respond better to outside accountability, that's just the type of person you are. And that can be a feature that you can use to your advantage, not just a weakness. And the main way you can use this feature to your advantage is to set up appointments and accountability with other people. For instance, before this whole quarantine experience, I found it really easy to show up for practice every day and go run at 320 because my team was expecting me to be there. But now that it's just me at home, I do find it pretty difficult to make myself go outside to run, even though I do like running. You might want to call or meet up with friends to study or a group of like-minded people to go on a safe, socially distanced bike ride. Getting that commitment with other people is a good way to make yourself actually show up and get it done. The last method for this video is taking just one step. It's often said that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, and this is definitely true for any large projects that you're working on or even smaller tasks. Sometimes these big, often amorphous tasks like start a business or write my paper can just feel so big and directionless, so it really helps to break them down into smaller concrete steps. This is especially helpful if you're avoiding something because it seems overwhelming and difficult and your brain is kind of just going, what's the point? I'll never get it done or succeed anyways. Because no, you can and you will, as long as you break it down into simple steps. As the name implies, what you want to do for this method is break down that gigantic task into little teeny tiny tasks. Bits and bobs, microscopic fragments, if you will. So maybe that 10 page research paper you have to write starts with step one, annotate the prompt. Step two, write a draft thesis, etc., etc., until you've broken down the entire thing into exact tiny items of every single thing you have to do. Especially if you're avoiding something because you think it's difficult, you might want to have your first couple of steps be something super basic and easy. That way you can build your confidence before you start tackling the bigger parts of the task. And then once everything seems bite-sized and manageable, it's pretty easy to get started. And those are the five methods that I wanted to talk about today. If you have any other tips and tricks that you want to recommend, please do leave them in the comments for all of us to benefit from. I hope you found this helpful and I upload new videos every week. I also post photos of my notes and bullet journal on my Instagram, which is at studyquill. See you next time. I should be the last to know.